this meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Notice of this meeting was provided to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on January 5th, 2024, and was posted on the Borough Hall website at www.hbborough.com and on the bulletin board of Borough Hall, 221 South Fifth Avenue in Highland Park, New Jersey, and has remained continuously posted as required by law. Dennis, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Roll call. Mayor Foster. Here. Councilwoman Canavera. Here. Councilman George. Yes. Councilman Hale. Here. Council President Hirsch. Here. Councilwoman Kim Chohan. Councilman, sorry, Con Councilperson Pestonic. Here. Special Council Bauman. Here. Our Road Administrator Hover. Here. Okay. Discussion items are financial disclosure for DNL Urban Renewal LLC, which is otherwise known as Superfresh. And then we're going to go to resolution, resolution number 20-2024-02 executive session regarding redevelopment negotiation on track A and litigation JSM versus Highland Park. May I have a motion to adopt or reject? Motion to adopt. Can I have a second? Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilman George? Councilman Hale? Yes. Council President Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Kostolnik? Yes. And now it's time for public discussion. Seeing that we have no one in audience, um, we're going to move to those who on Zoom. It's now time for public comment. Speaker has three minutes, but can comment on any topic. The borough clerk will monitor the time and will offer a 30 second warning and then indicate when three minutes has, has lapsed. The session will wrap up by 9 p.m. Excuse me, Mayor. Anyone on Zoom? Uh, the discussion item we skipped over. We were supposed to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were just trying to get the business out of the way. <laughs> okay, so now discussion item. And then public comment after that, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, discussion item. So, uh, Attorney Bauman. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, do, I, 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 was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm a little bit off my game. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, thank you, Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I think it's important to, um, we're going to discuss the financial agreement for the new operator of the grocery store. Super fresh. And I think it's really important for us to uh, sort of go back to the past about a year or more ago um, when we first found out that the grocery store was closing. Uh, I would say there was a loud cry from the public, Tony Body. Um, we can't let that happen. We have to, we have to solve that problem. Um, that began a process that's taken us the better part of a year or more to where we are today, where we have a grocer who uh, is about to invest six million dollars in that uh, building including work on the inside and the outside um, and that only happened because this company body had the foresight to figure out how to put itself in a position to have tools necessary to entice that operator to come to Highland Park. I think I would uh, be remiss if I would say that when we began this process I certainly wouldn't have bet that we could pull this off but the government body surely thought we could um, and what began there was, so they turned to the professional team and Terry and our set myself and the planners and they said, how, how do we put ourselves in a position to attract a grocery store? And we said, well, we have to put it in an area of need redevelopment. We have to adopt a redevelopment plan. Um, and then we have to go out in the world and try and find our grocery store. We did that. Um, we began the process by first designating the area. We retained a professional to uh, analyze the area it was a fairly simple analysis only because it was a vacant grocery store and it was certainly outdated in need of significant improvements. We then adopted the plan uh, as a way to try and entice that developer. We uh, said that you could do some residential and the grocery store, but no matter what you want to do under this new plan, 
there has to be a grocery store part of it. Simultaneously, I know the mayor, I know Terry, I know myself, we're all out knocking on doors for grocery stores. Wake Fern, Food Town, um, you name it. We were calling around to see who would come to Island Park and take over this project because it was clear from the community, from the people that spoke here, that this is an integral part of Island Park. This is a must have. This is something that we need to provide for the kids. It's not just a, a I'd like to, it's a necessity for this community that likes to walk. It's a necessity not to have the downtown with this huge empty store in all of it. And lo and behold, through that process, um, with the help of the block property owners, who certainly were involved uh, in this process, and I I would, I'd rather say they were new to the process, but we were we worked with them really closely, the mayor did, and Terry, and you know, all of us to try and work them through the redevelopment process. And as a result, here today, I'm so happy to recommend to you um, for the consideration of your next main a financial agreement that would uh, provide the three developer with a payment in lieu of taxes for up to 30 years. That payment in lieu of taxes is going to be roughly, it is going to be $50,000 a year, increasing by 2% a year for the life. It terminates at the grocery store closes. It's entirely driven to entice this operator or an operator, but this one in particular now to come to Island Park and operate and invest. Again, they're investing $6 million into, the, into this building. That's huge for us. Um, the taxes normally would, might be about 100,000, so the discount is about 50,000. Um, I think if we had asked the taxpayers back in the day, divided the number of taxpayers at $50,000, would you pay that amount of money for us to have a grocery store in that scenario? I think the answer would have been overwhelming yes. So at the next meeting, um, we're going to introduce an ordinance for consideration by the governing body. The ordinance will approve a financial agreement, and the financial agreement, as I described, is by paying the taxes of fifty thousand dollars a year, increasing by two percent a year, terminating with a grocery store of The uh, as part of this process, we did gather a lot of information about the grocery store, the operator. We have we've seen the plans they have for them. Um, we we've seen the they had a provide some pro forma, which you'll see in the application, um, that shows that they uh, need this um, pilot. But most important, the pilot is leading with the definition is it has to, we need it to uh, influence the locational decisions of the probable occupants. Those are the legal words. Influence the locational decision of the probable occupants. There is no doubt that this pilot influenced this operator to come here and occupy this building and put $6 million in, into the project. So um, again, I think that I was skeptic, I apologize, uh, um, when we first started this process, there weren't a lot of grocery stores out there. And it's a unique size facility. Um, we had to find the right entity, and we did. We found an entity. If you go look at some of the other stores, they're pretty nice. Um, I'm familiar with that because I worked on the grocery store, but not for them, but um, for the property owner. Um, in middle in middle six borough. It's really nice. Um, that one also was empty for a very long time and they figured out how to make that one work. So these are people that are, and by the way, they're investing their own money um, into this facility. Um, so this is an entity that's here to stay. They're putting their money where their mouth with is. And out of the park's role in this is to um, take about a $50,000 and take half the taxes that we normally get in order to get them here. Um, for this project. So I, the, the mayor, I think, is going to recommend it in her letter, um, Steal Heart Thunder. Um, and I certainly recommend it as professionals. This is a win 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 uh, for Highland Park. Huge plus. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that you gave a little narrative or overview because I was watching uh, News 12. I was watching News 12. And they were showing um, down in Brick, New Jersey, that they were out. They were without a supermarket for over ten years. And they say the average time to get a supermarket back into any location is ten years. So Highland Park, we are blessed. We worked really hard, and I'm so happy that we're going to be able to have our own supermarket back. Less than two years, <laughs> a year and a half, and we're going to be back in because they closed last March, and here we are this March looking to sign an agreement to officially have them in town with the 50% um, deduction and, you know, the pilot that we're giving them and to have our own very supermarket, our very own supermarket, because a lot of our seniors, one of the things that they need most is an in-town supermarket, not only seniors, just about everyone, because we all go, oh, 
and there's not a supermarket, you know, want to run to something. And I know my son said to me the other night, you got to hurry up and get the supermarket because I needed milk on my way home and I forgot and I have no milk, you know, but we all need it. We all use it. So I'm really happy about that. And I'm quite sure my council colleague is going to be urging us to sign whatever paperwork necessary to get our supermarket in. Um, with that said, I guess we go to public discussion. Or do we have any discussion here in the day? Does anyone have anything to add, Councilmember Hill? I, I would just uh, briefly add that, that this has been warp speed and it has been um, pushing by every member of the governing body, but certainly by the mayor as well. The mayor is, 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 has taken a, a strong lead on making sure that this happens. And so I just wanted to say thank you to her um, and to Terry and to Joe um, and, and to everybody for, for this process. Um, it was a lot of hard work and a lot of stress and a lot of, um, but um, this is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for Highland Park. It's the right thing to do for um, all of our residents. Um, uh, and and, and uh, I'm just so happy that I don't have to run out for ketchup or mayonnaise, uh, you know, someplace that far away, um, right before Shabbos dinner. So thank you very much. Uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us. It's teamwork. I would just add that Matt just basically said everything that I wanted to say. So I'll just say thank you again for all of your hard work and I'm really excited and looking forward to this vote in uh, one week. Yep, yeah. So tonight, and consistent with the mayor and the council's desire to be as transparent as possible, we're just explaining it tonight. There's no vote. And then the application will be uploaded and people can take a look at it. Um, yes. And the financial agreement will upload it. And then the vote will be an introduction of an ordinance. And there'll be another vote to adopt the ordinance. So this is going to be a three meeting. Reveal it tonight, introduce the ordinance, adopt the ordinance. Um, um, three, three prong approach. But as long as the council members are on board, I'll be happy to sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. If if it's like a one in Middlesex borough, then then that will be a huge win for Highland Park because uh, I took a, I took a trip up there and it's beautiful. Uh, and it really is, uh, you know, and, and it's such an upgrade compared to what we had. I just, I really want to drive that point home is that what we had before was really an aging model. Um, and the super fresh is, is in tune, the, the, their model is tuned for small town, uh, for, for, for small town towns, uh, in town locations. And uh, it's just really exciting. A huge upgrade, fresher produce, a lot of variety. Um, and uh, like you said, you know, it's our supermarket. It's really exciting. So it's super fresh. Yeah. So <laughs> what are the things that for me is that people are going to read it and they're going to ask so I'm going to try and tackle it right here. So we, this, in order to get this pilot, there's a redevelopment area bond associated with yes. it. Uh, redevelopment area bond is not recourse to the municipality, meaning the bond holder that when we issue this um, will only be able to the property owner. It's a necessary legal uh, mechanism to allow us to have the fixed $50,000 increasing every year. As opposed to some of the other formulas, so we intentionally did that. It's a it's a nominal bond. It's paid for by the property owners on top of fifty thousand. So it's not. I'm sorry, it's within fifty thousand. Paid by it's three thousand dollars a year uh, to pay off the bonds uh, over time. And to uh, sort of wrap this up, we will go to the local finance board and ask for their blessing as well. Uh, so that'll be the last step. So not only will the governing body have a vote on it, but the local finance board will have to give their blessing as well, which I fully expect. Thank you. I, I, my, my, I did have a comment. But, oh, sure. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. I couldn't tell if you were looking at me. Um, I just, it actually builds off of what uh, Council Member Hirsch said was um, just to reiterate, there's not one shred of the old store inside that building right now. That is true. The floors are gone. The ceiling's gone. Every grocery case yes. is gone. And that was actually the property owners decided mm -hmm. to make that decision that so that we will be getting an upgrade uh, to your point. And, and so um, and I did get a look inside um, a few weeks back and it was really it was like, wow, you know, it, there was nothing in there, but it was it was pretty tremendous. So I just wanted to reiterate that point. Uh, this isn't a, a band aid on the old store. This is going to be a brand new store within the envelope of the old building. And some and so, some outside improvements. Yes, too. with some yeah. side improvements. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we have public discussion. 
and we do have, I don't see anybody Anyone? in person. There's no one in person. I'm uh, sorry. For those I of you said, at home. Besides, there's yeah. no one in person. Now we go to those on attending on Zoom. All right. And this is where Maureen, you're going to have to help me with the time. I'm going to call on uh, phone number ending uh, 4445. Please state your name for us and address. Hi. Lois Webbing, um, Mayor or Terry, would you, one of you whose microphone is working clearly, please translate what the first speaker was saying. I couldn't hear the other two speakers. Toward the end of the first speaker's discussion, I heard grocery store. Here I'm thinking it's six other items they're t talking about. So that microphone, either the person was a foot away or it's underwater. It just garbled. I could not get another word. So I'm interested in that, but I have other questions. Could someone just give me a of what the discussion or I did hear ter Terry clearly, clearly say that there's nothing left of the old. There's going to be a new store in the envelope. So uh, what we described was Excuse a me, uh, council, Joe, I would maybe back off your mic a little bit and maybe let's, and let's test it with Ms. Leving. I, I, I don't. Can you, okay. can, can you, do you wanna no, 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 I, I, um, it. it wasn't you. I think, I think it was Matt. Maybe she was, um, Lois, let me ask you a question. Did you hear what our attorney Bauman had to say clearly about the supermarket? No. No, I I didn't know who it was. I didn't. The first speaker was a male, and until the end, when I heard the word grocery store, I have no clue. Not one syllable came through. Got not you. One got word you. Got you. Okay, I got it. Thank Sorry. you. Uh, Is this good? Yes. Try that. I, 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 I How, sense a little feedback. So yeah. How about now? All right. Let me try it one more time. Uh, I won't take you through the whole history and where we got, how we got to where we are today. Other than to say, one year ago, we found out that the existing grocery store operator was leaving Highland Park, and we embarked upon a one-year effort to put ourselves in a position to offer a payment in lieu of taxes to the grocery store community in an effort to attract the grocery store to Highland Park. We successfully did that, and tonight uh, we're describing for the public, we're not voting, the financial agreement which will be signed between the borough and the operator, the tenant in the new grocery store, which will provide for a payment in lieu of taxes for the period of 30 years, which effectively is about half of what the taxes would normally be, $50,000 increasing by 2% per year, 3,000 of which is going to a redevelopment area bond. And the redevelopment area bond um, is a mechanism required to allow us to use this formula for the pilot. And I, the last comment was, we uh, we won't be doing anything tonight in terms of a vote. We'll introduce the ordinance at the next meeting and we'll adopt it at a subsequent meeting after a public hearing. And then we'll have to go to the local finance board to get their blessing. Did you hear okay, I heard I heard about a third of it, but I heard the pilot 50,000 something, 2%. No, it's that microphone is underwater. It is just garbled. But I have questions about the redevelopment or to the redevelopment entity. May I ask that now or would that be later? Does this have to do with Superfresh? No, not exactly. At the end of March, we were promised that the redevelopment, something will be uh, shown at the high school. Is that still on target? That's not on the discussion at this time, but yes, okay. it's still on target. All right, well, I'll We're hold on and wait. We're discussing only the but... supermarket at this time. Okay, so I will wait, and thank you. I heard bits and pieces of it, but that microphone needs to be replaced. I can hear you clearly. I can hear, as I said, Terry. And the other two guys come in and out. Thank you. I'll hold on. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. Uh, just give me one moment. Um, and just for the record, it looks like we have seven attendees and one more hand raised up. Uh, Mary Forsberg, please state your name and address. Hi, um, Mary Forsberg, um, 317 Highland, uh, Denison Street in Highland Park. Um, I reiterate what Lois said. I'm glad she called in because I couldn't understand a word of what um, 
uh, attorney Bauman was saying. Uh, I, I'm sort of curious, like um, the the Frederick is a hundred thousand dollars a year, and um, I know we need a grocery store more than we need another apartment building. But um, how did I'm curious about how you came up with fifty thousand dollars a year with a two percent increase per year, and what was it that um, the stop and shop paid, and what would have paid under the new revaluation? So the difference is that it was about half of what the otherwise applicable taxes would be. And it was a, a number that we thought would be enough to entice the operator and it did, but we weren't prepared to do any more than that. We still want. I, hello? I, I'm sorry, yeah. I, still couldn't under, I still couldn't understand what you said. What did you say? It's half of what the stop and shop used to pay? Yes. So the stop and shop was paying $100,000 a year in property taxes? Yeah, roughly, yes. And so why did you come up with 50000 We so thought it was an uh, appropriate number that would entice the new operator. Uh, but at the same time, we didn't, we thought half was about the right number to entice the new operator. And we were right. Well, it worked. They came. But, I mean, I, I guess that's some question as to whether that really is the right amount of money. I don't know what to say. As well, I said before, it takes about 10 years to get a soup, to get a supermarket into any location. We were fortunate enough to entice a supermarket to come. The um, the area was deemed area in need of redevelopment, and we put the caveat that there would be a pilot attached to anyone coming into that area because we desperately need a supermarket in that, that will come into Highland Park. We didn't have 10 years to sit around and wait without a pilot to say, let's wait for a supermarket to get to Highland Park. We did what we thought was best to bring a supermarket into our town that is sorely needed. So- And I would, I would add matter that we were more likely to get something else. Yes, so, something very different. So can I finish my question? So you said the area is in need of redevelopment and we were lucky to get a supermarket. What is the status of all the redevelopment plans that you you uh, you know paid uh, um, LRK to do, Mary? At this at, at, at this moment, we are discussing the super fresh supermarket that's coming in. That's what's on the agenda, and that's what what we're discussing tonight. But it is we'll part have of an opportunity plan. to discuss uh, the other redevelopment plans at another time. But tonight, the focus is on the super fresh. But this is part of the stop and shop redevelopment plan. Yes, it is. So it seems like a fair, fair thing to ask about what you're going to do with the rest of that area. We're out of time. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Sorry. Any other person? Give me one moment. Hold on. Looks like Kieran Crowley's up next. Please state your name and address. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Kieran Crowley, 218 Harrison Avenue. Um, congratulations on getting to this stage in the deal. I've got a couple of questions just on some specifics. Um, I heard the attorney say this business is here to stay. Um, but of course, it's a business, so things can change. So can you tell us what the penalty clauses will be if they exit after one year or two years or three years? The uh, pilot will go away. The tax abatement leaves. Terminates. So they would owe, uh, I guess, they'd have to go back to the original tax rate. Is that what you're saying? No, no. Whatever they pay, they pay. Under without the carrying property owner would get the benefit of the tax exemption any longer. Sorry, I'm just going to ask for a clarification again. The, the audio is not great. So what happens is um, in the financial agreement, they have an obligation to pay taxes. If the grocery store leaves, the tax exemption leaves with it. Oh, so from thereafter. But they they wouldn't have to... I, I, I would think you'd want to have a clause in there that they commit actually commit for three years or five years. And if they don't, you could pull away this um, tax benefit. Could you so they, they, uh, they signed a 20 year lease with the, uh, with the property owner, which we have a copy of. So okay. they're, they're committed for 20 years to the property owner. Okay, thank you. Um, 
And I guess similar to the question by the previous caller, so um, what does the contract say about any future development of track D? Does it limit it in any way? It doesn't address any other development. Any other development would be subject to the redevelopment plan, the zoning, and they'd have to come in and go through all the approvals um, like normal. They'd have to get a redevelopment agreement. Um, that, so they're not entitled to anything as a result of this agreement for the balance of the property. I can tell you that the, the grocery store did reserve a fair amount of parking for its facility. So there is a limited area that can actually um, develop most of the front. So, that, so there's, there's nothing, nothing, not there's nothing that, not let's say, inhibits going ahead with some of those Track D plans. Is, is that a fair statement? It's not Track D. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just rephrase that for, for my clarity. So is there anything in this agreement that would limit that development, that redevelopment plan that was put together, you know, at great speed a year ago. The only limitation is between the property owner and the tenant, um, who, as you can imagine, reserve a certain reservations of land, hot spaces, things like that, in order to uh, the operator, the new grocery store, is limiting the current the owner of the property in certain ways so they can have a profitable grocery store. But that's as between the Landlord is a tenant. Okay. Thank you. Time. Um, looks like that was our last uh, hand up. Thank you. All right. Um, this is all very exciting. All right. So um, that ends our public discussion. And now we're going to move to resolution, which I jumped over so quickly. <laughs> resolution uh, 2024-02, executive session regarding redevelopment negotiation track A, litigation JSM versus Highland Park. May I have a motion to adopt or reject? Motion to adopt. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Canavera. Yes. Councilman George. Yes. Councilman Hill? Yes. Council President Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Postal? Yes. Okay. Now it's time for a pub, for public comment. Number no, two. No, 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 no. We did it. We did it. Oh my God. I have my, paper. oh, I have my paperwork all mixed up. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that goes there. This goes here. All right. I do a motion seconding. Okay, so now it's. May I have a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I carry. Good night, everyone. See you at the next council meeting. <laughs>